Joining me this morning in the studio all morning is commentator Sam Armstrong. Uh, also delighted to be joined by Peter Blexley, a former Scotland Yard detective in the studio as well. What a treat. Good morning to you. Thank you. Um, we've got a lot to talk about. Yes. <laughs> Where do we even start? Now, I, I was expecting we, you and I would be talking, first of all, about what happened in Cardiff, these riots. Um, and, and, of course, um, we, we, there's the Madeleine McCann search in that reservoir in Portugal. Um, but there's no doubt at all that those stories have been overtaken, certainly in terms of the news agenda, by uh, these fresh allegations against Boris Johnson. Um, just to get everyone up to date, Boris Johnson has been referred to the police, both at uh, in, in uh, the Metropolitan Police and the Thames Valley Police. Uh, he's been referred by the Cabinet Office after his Prime Ministerial Diary. So this isn't this isn't a diary like you and I go, oh, you know, went to tea today. These are sort of formal diaries that are kept uh, showing uh, what his itinerary was and where he was going and who he was meeting. And his uh, diary being looked at by lawyers, paid for by you and me, taxpayers paying for this, as the Prime Minister Rishi Sunak had ordered for lawyers to peruse, peruse all his documentation ahead of Boris Johnson's appearance eventually in front of the COVID inquiry. This is, these lawyers are, are basically helping to prepare him and his documentation. Um, they found evidence that his diary showed that there had been more breaches of lockdown rules. These took place between June 2020, so just a few months after the first lockdown began and took, carried on until May 2021, it is alleged. Claims that family and friends visited him at his official Prime Ministerial country residence of Chequers during the COVID pandemic. Claims that those were a breach of the rules. Um, the lawyers uh, would pass that information to the police. They also passed it to the Privileges Committee. That's that committee of MPs headed by Harriet Harman um, as part of their investigation into whether or not Boris Johnson deliberately uh, misled the House of Commons. Now, Boris Johnson has said uh, that these are bizarre and unacceptable new claims. He's <laughs> called this a politically motivated stitch-up and is now threatening to sue the government over these extracts being handed to the police without his knowledge. Peter Blexley, first of all, should the lawyers have handed that information to the police? Well, most COVID breaches were dealt with by way of issuing a fixed penalty notice. Mm -hmm. So they're pretty much at the lowest level of, of criminality. And Some people got 10 grand fines. Yes, but most people got, got much, much smaller fines than that. For example, members of the Cabinet and the government. And they were essentially issued with a, a parking ticket type yeah. document. And so it's a it's a minor offence which would be heard in the lower court. And if the same rules that apply to speeding, for example, there's a six month limitation there. So if you got flashed on a speed camera, they've got six months to get the summons in front of you and get you into court. Now, these took place at least a couple of years ago, these alleged low level kind of breaches. So why on earth is there still an investigation going on? Why on earth? A very important documents like a former Prime Minister's diaries being handed to the police. You know, this is not crime of the century. I think it's time everybody grew up and moved on. Sam Armstrong, I know you're smiling away. This is where you go. Do I look? Do I think this was a crime of the century? No, no, I don't either. Uh, um, but this is significant. I'm, I'm going to actually, before I get you to answer, I'm just going to give you the breaking news. Uh, the rate of inflation has just been announced. This is the Consumer Price Index announced by the Office for National Statistics. And it is finally. Sigh of relief, everybody. It's back in single digits for the first time since last August. Uh, is it is now to 8.7%. That was the rate last month. Now, it was 10.1% um, uh, the month before, but it's 8 point seven percent now. So we are finally properly on that downward trajectory. So that is certainly very much good news. Um, let me come back to you, though, Sam Armstrong. Um, look, not crime of the century. Look, no one thing. No, we're not saying Boris Johnson killed people by having anyone, if he did, to uh, to visit him in Chequers during COVID rules. But nevertheless, a a politically elected leader, a prime minister, making new laws, saying these were vital to protect lives, that completely trashed our economy. If you're wondering why we've got eight point seven percent inflation, folks. Locking down the economy for two years didn't help. Um, people didn't couldn't get to see loved ones. Children weren't able to go to school at that time. Um, but he was having people, it is alleged, 
do I need to bother with the alleged? Of course he had people to check us. That rumour's been going around Westminster for a long time. I don't doubt. I would put my home and my daughter's life on the fact that Boris Johnson had family and friends and had parties at Chequers during that lockdown time. Of course he did. Um, but, you know, d does it matter? And do particularly, does it matter now, two or three years on? Well, Julia, I get why you're angry with them. I really do. But if it was anybody else in this country and we would say there was some allegation that Tom, who runs the local chippy, was having a party in the back room once in the 9th of May 2020, we would be saying it was outrageous for the police for investigating. I had unbelievable respect for you when you came out and you said that uh, you disagreed with what Republic were doing protesting at the coronation. They weren't your type of people, but the police shouldn't have taken them and uh, uh, arrested them because free speech for us is free speech for them. This uh, uh, operation against Boris, and it is an operation, is completely disproportionate. If it was anybody else, we'd be saying it's a stitch-up. And if it looks but, and smells like a stitch-up, he's right, it is But it, the point is, if it was anybody else... Look, no, if we found out that you were breaching Covid rules, I'm sure you did. I'm sure we... I, I won't, I'm not going to say all of us did, because I know people who genuinely did not break a single rule, and their lives were absolutely trashed by it. Um, uh, you know, in terms of being able to see family members. Many people weren't able to break rules because of their jobs or because of just they weren't they weren't you know the thing the rule they wanted to break like see a loved one in a care home wasn't wasn't possible for them to do but he was the prime minister he made the law he brought the law in peter blexley it is therefore on him to 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 obey the law we've got lawyers they're not invest they're not continuing to investigate him in the cabinet office they are there preparing documentation for the covid inquiry that he announced into you know the biggest you know the most the biggest hit on our freedoms and biggest damage to our economy and our health for for a for for a century um if they find evidence of wrongdoing, they have to hand it on to the police, don't they? Boris Johnson has previously been fined for COVID breaches. Yeah, but fact. it was an absurd fine. It was the one the cake yeah. when there were loads of other loads of other claims in Downing Street that he wasn't investigated yeah. for. Yeah, well, so be it. There is a tide of teenage blood flowing through our streets of our cities. Crime is rampant. Victims of crime are in the millions. So many people are being failed because there's no police investigations. I do not want valuable police resources wasted on a historical potential offence of a fairly minor nature. What I find extraordinary is how long these things take. We know it's like months and months and months, um, and it's going to be years sometimes. This is really very, very simple. You can check people's movements. You can check other people's diaries. I reckon I could have this all sorted by Friday. If I, you know, took the day off work, finished my jury duty straight away, I, I could have this all sorted, like getting a hold of, you know, people's phones, questioning them. Uh, let, bring your diary in from that day. I think we can safely see uh, whether or not you were or were not visiting checkers. I'm pretty sure when people are visiting checkers, they've got it in their diary. Um, why do the police take so long to find these things out? Why does it have to involve huge amounts of police resources and cost millions of pounds to do such basic work? Because I fear they're not very good on a lot of occasions. You said um, He's a former police officer, he said it, not me. <laughs> yeah, it, it, it always baffles me why these investigations take so long. But in this case, with historical allegations about what would be fairly minor Covid breaches that invariably would be dealt with by a fine, Let's not even bother. There is so much more important crime that needs investigating. So many victims who are being failed and so many bad people out there who need locking up. Let the police do proper police work. Yeah, I mean, there, there is that. I mean, that's Sam Armstrong. We, we would like our police to concentrate on serious crimes. And we had some figures out the other day about, you know, um, uh, theft of police vehicles. I mean, it's all up 25%. It's not police, theft of vehicles up 25%. And police barely investigate any of these crimes at all anymore. I mean, certainly I talked to my local high street uh, shopkeeper and they all say, genuinely, the police won't even turn up and they are facing, I mean, basically raids of organised criminals stealing stuff every day. Yeah, good luck getting a, a multi-million pound police investigation if your house is burgled, like we had in into Partygate. And that's, that's the reality. We've got to make choices. If you're putting police 
detectives onto investigating what Boris Johnson was doing in tennis. Did he have a legitimate work excuse? Did he not have a legitimate work excuse? You're taking them off burglary squads. Uh, people aren't going to be getting those crimes investigated. They're the ones that, that bother them. And there's a problem with policing in this country just generally, in my view, that they're only ever interested in investigating anything if it's on the front page of The Guardian or national newspapers or television. If That's someone, what someone's uh, mis misgendered somebody. Peter, is that your, your view too? Uh, sadly, the police have been so distracted for so long by things which really aren't their core purpose. Mm. Policing's lost its way. There's, There's no absolutely doubt no about doubt that. about that. And it needs to regain those principles that Robert Peel laid down in 1829 okay. and get on with it. Well, I want to hear from you, the audience. I know, look, we're all going to be differing on this. Um, Boris Johnson's facing a police investigation over fresh claims of breaking COVID lockdown rules. He says this is a politically motivated stitch-up. Uh, he's even threatening to sue the government over handing over his diaries uh, to the police. Is he right or should he be investigated? I want to hear from you. Text the word TALK to 8722. Tweet me at TALK TV. Lots of those messages already coming in thick and fast. Um, let's turn our attention to, you know, again, policing that really, really does matter. We, were, I think we were all quite shocked to see on Tuesday morning that footage of uh, riots in Cardiff on this housing estate in Ely um, and really very, very, you know, worrying footage in police uh, uh, riot vans. Um, we've got, you know, a windscreen smashed, cars set alight, absolute devastation, people uh, digging up paving slabs, throwing them at the police, absolute devastation. Then it emerged, this has all happened after in the event of a fatal collision. Um, it was. We then learnt that two teenage boys, Kyrie Sullivan, age 16, and Harvey Evans, age 15, were the victims of that fatal crash. They were on an e-bike. It was claimed by locals at the time and by family members who were angry they weren't able to attend the scene of the two boys, and that was what sparked the, the rioting. We are told, again, a lot of things are still up in the air, that, uh, that they had been uh, in a police chase uh, with a police van. A police van had been following them closely. Now, the police denied they had been involved at all. It has since emerged... CCTV footage from actually a family member of one of the uh, the, the dead boys um, that um, a uh, police van was chasing the two boys on an e-bike just minutes before the crash. They were spotted on CCTV travelling at 28 miles per hour, just 15 metres behind uh, the boys on their bike um, and uh, it was just a mile away and it was just the CCTV was four minutes before uh, the first reports of the crash came. Um, the police in South Wales have now referred themselves to the police watchdog um, but police say it wasn't our, you know, not our scarf. We weren't involved at all. Um, telling, you know, media repeatedly asking them this question and they deny it. Then the CCTV footage emerges. Now there's an investigation. Does that raise any question marks for you in your head? Very much so. Call me old fashioned, but I'd really like our police to reconnect with the notion of telling the truth. I think that would help in terms of public trust and confidence. Sadly, of course, these lads lost their lives. The rioting was unacceptable and affected a lot of entirely innocent people who had their property damaged. And it may have been the case that actually the police were quite right to be tailing these these boys and we don't know the circumstances in which they were riding this e-scooter. No, we don't and I'm sure that will come out in the e wash when the inquiry has run its course. Thankfully, there was peace in Ely. It was quiet in Cardiff last night so we need to be very grateful for that. Sadly, of course, police officers got injured. But, you know, there is a breakdown. Well, I keep banging on about this trust and confidence in the police. There is a breakdown. There is a disconnect between working-class people and the police, between other victims of crime and the police in so many areas. And the police have really got to reconnect with their basic principles. That Bobby on the beat, which actually was a thing during my policing days needs to be re-established. only time I ever see police officers now is when I leave the, the, the tube station, um, uh, in, 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 you know, getting off the train, and, um, and there'll be some police officers waiting to see if people are, are jumping the barriers and things. Funnily enough, people don't jump the barriers when the police are standing there. I'd be surprised if they ever catch anyone. Yeah. I see, but when I see people every day jumping the barriers, but they're only there, but they're only there then. But I don't see them. They're, but they, they they're, when they're there, they're clearly not bothering to catch the you know the shoplifters and the raiders of the, on the high street. Um, Sam Armstrong, you're desperate to get in there. There's a lot of outrage about this, but I'm sorry if you speak to anybody that lives on these kind of estates, what they will tell you is there are local hoodlums yeah. that make the lives of everybody else who lives on that estate a misery. Yeah. Now I've got no idea why two 16-year-olds were on the same e-bike cycling away from the police at 28 miles an hour, these are electronic powered mm. bikes, running around the estate doing 
who knows what but i think actually the police and i don't know why they've blundered this line but they're entitled to some support if they're going chasing round these people that make yep. lives and that's injuries. it why are you not chasing them would be with the now we don't again we do not know at this time what the circumstances were of this case but again there's that lack of trust you can't trust you feel that you, whether the police are telling you the truth well whether if the police spokesman did not know whether or not a police van was chasing them if other people were saying the reason why the reason why they was the attacks on the emergency services and the police when they arrived was because people felt they were being chased by the police at the time the police said oh, no we weren't no we weren't you'd think before you say no we weren't chasing them that you might check was a police van chasing these boys um and um, and 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 people answering as you say peter blexley um, honestly yes we were now you could then say yes we were but we'd we'd stop chase at this point 28 miles per hour one mile away four minutes beforehand um I'm sorry, it's absolutely absurd that, that, that this information was not given to the public straight away. Um, we're going to wait and see. There'll be an investigation, a very high-level investigation. Do you trust Peter Blexley that we will find out the truth? I sincerely hope we do. Do you but think of course, that we will? We must do. It's absolutely crucial. South Wales Police have handled this appallingly thus far. They bring it on themselves a lot of they the time, do. don't they? They do. But you know what? When you're in the police, you should deal with facts and evidence and truth mm. and not put out these clearly incorrect messages and therefore the public mm. simply don't trust what they see yeah. and what they and, hear. And also you can argue, look, I mean, again, we don't know the circumstances of these two boys, 15 and 16 year olds, um, but as a general rule, I don't know, if the police were chasing me, um, I, I, think, I think I'm duty bound to pull over and stop. These boys so are, why did they not, if these, that was the case? These boys are dead, and that's a tragedy. Yeah, absolutely. No matter what, again, no matter what, and again, I don't think people should be casting aspersions, and we don't know anything about these boys at this time. Whatever the circumstances, you know, two, two, two kids have lost their lives, and he, even if they were, and I'm not saying they were, even if they were wrongans, they're kids. A lot of people do things wrong in their kids. Let me quote a hypothetical situation yeah. which I'm now going to invent, OK? If I were a uniformed police officer and I saw two young men, whether it be on a, a, a bike or a motorbike or this, that and the other, and they weren't wearing helmets, OK, would it be wise in the here and now yeah. to pursue them at high speed? I don't think they'd be... Yes, that's true. But they, they would wouldn't it be, be wise? required to wear them, would they? Um, can I just ask you, finally, we, we're going to have to just move on to, really quickly. I want to talk about Madeleine McCann, that search going on of that uh, that reservoir, that lake. Uh, it's a huge, huge, huge big uh, body of water, uh, 30 miles from Proud de Luche, where uh, it, Madeleine McCann went missing back in 2007. German police leading this. Um, they appear to be searching in a very small area. We understand it's a tip-off, and they, they believe they... We understand they are from some of the papers they are working off photographs actually uh, which are in possession of Christian Bruckner the man who they consider to be their their prime suspect um, are you hopeful that we will get some answers as a result of this reservoir search oh, I hope like many many other people do that there is some kind of positive outcome and some hard and fast evidence is obtained we've had false dawns in the past so i'm going to wait and see a long time bags were removed apparently yesterday mm -hmm. so whether that is exhibits for, for further examination but what we really need in order for this case to be brought to some form of conclusion is hard fast irrefutable evidence absolutely peter blexley uh, former scotland yard detective always so appreciate you taking the time to talk to us thank you for coming in